Hello there, friends. Yes, friends of the radio and those who belong to Jesus. I'm thanking you because that you decided to come along with us again this afternoon. <clears throat> it seems like a broken record. When I started this out some 16 years ago and a little better, I didn't know I'd be on this long, and I didn't know Jesus would tarry this long. But since he has, I endeavor to stay with this part of his service if I can. As long as he gives me health and gives me the spirit to carry on, I want to bring the God's word unto you as you pray down messages for me. For God is still on the throne, and he loves you. Yes, he loves you very much, and I have to say that I believe he loves me too. Glory, or he wouldn't have let me stay with God's people this long. Now this afternoon we're going to be a-looking at the book of Esther and about the fifth chapter. And it's going to be an extensive study, so I'm going to read a very little bit, and then I'm going to explain it as we go because I believe it would take too long to read here and there what I want. In other words, what I'm being talking about this afternoon is our heavenly Mordecai, praising the name of the Lord. But I'm going to give you something to think about. Now, I said about six months ago that I might have to leave the air. I'm not... Now, for a di I didn't have to for that reason that I was afraid of. But there's another one coming that I can see. Maybe it's just a rumor. But I want you folk that are listening to me now, you just send me a card, and I won't come back at you like a hornet following smoke back. I won't come back at you, but just send a card. Very few offerings I get. And, but anyway, you send that card and tell me what you listen to, mostly, where it's FM or AM. That's what I want to know, and I want to know ver very shortly if I can. It will help me a whole lot to know what my future on the radio program is going to be like. And I'm sure that you will be enough, be honorable enough, honor bound enough that you will tell me. Now, I know that there was one that said, just send me a card. That's been over 16 years ago. Just send me a card. And uh, uh, so you couldn't send money in a card, so he meant that you couldn't send money. And then when he got the address on the card, then he went and knocked on the door. No, I don't aim to do that. Unless you want to put it on your card for some reason that you want to see me. There's one sister out here in White Hall that I talked to a couple of years ago, and I've never been able to, see, uh, to get out there. It just seems like uh, that it's a uh, go fast, go fast. And for my age at 71, oh, that's no age at all for what those people have got at not 85 and 100. But then I know that I don't visit enough, and I won't be a visiting you unless you ask me to. So don't worry about that. Just write a card to me and tell me where you listen to it predominantly on AM or FM. It will be a big help to me if you will. Now I'm going to ask Brother Tom and Sister Ned to come and to bring us a song now if they will do so. The title of this song is He Touched Me.
I'm glad that he touched me. And I'm glad that he touched you. Those of you who pray down sermons for me. You say you don't pray, you don't go to your prayer closet and pray a sermon down for Brother Williams. You don't do that. No, but you love to hear the sermon. You love to hear the song. And consequently, it's on your heart and you don't realize that you're breathing a prayer out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to thank you who continue to pray for us from week to week. And those of you who do send in an offering once in a while, praise God for you. Now I'm going to look just here at a couple verses in the fifth chapter of Esther. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. <clears throat> what I want to say that this was in a time of what we call the captivity. When the Jews couldn't live right for God. You know what I mean. That they had too many other gods. Now I don't know where we do or not. I don't know what we make gods out of. Maybe we make it out of, uh, out of sports. Maybe we, maybe we make gods out of television. Maybe we make gods out of Hollywood. So on like that. Maybe we do. But uh, they had too many gods that they was worshiping. And finally the living God got tired and he let them go off into captivity. Well, while they were in captivity, there was one, then, then it changed hands and it, the Babylonians took them into captivity. Then the Medo-Persians overthrew the Babylonians and the Jews were still subject to them. And when the Jews become subject to them, there was one of them that was very hostile toward the Jews because this Mordecai would not bow down to him. And so uh, he went in and he was going to get a um, petition signed that all the Jews would be killed. All the Jews would be exterminated. And so this Mordecai, he knew that Queen Esther was a Jew. In fact, about the matter, they were related. And he told her, he says, you better pray and that because you will be exterminated the same as the rest of us. And he said, I'll pray that we won't be exterminated, that we won't be obliterated and annihilated and completely lost. And so they prayed. And she, there was a law that she wasn't allowed to go into the king until the king called her. And anyone that would go into the king without being sent for, that he would, uh, that if the, he didn't offer the scepter, that the guardians of his body would slay that person. And that's when Queen Esther said, Well, if I be slain, if I die, then I die. Oh, she had the same spirit that was shown in the three Hebrew children in the fire. Now that's uh, the setting of the scene. So uh, then we will do some, maybe some preaching on it, some extending on it, just in a few minutes. But in the meantime, I would like to have another song by the duet. The title of this song is Jesus is Precious to Me. Yeah. 
to you. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you could say yes. Oh, what could you do without him? How did you get as far as you did before you were saved? I've wondered that myself. You know, I'd hate to go back into the world like that I was at one time because I couldn't even get along with myself. Now, how about you? You can, can't you? Hallelujah. You get along with Jesus, you get along with those who love Jesus, and you try to get along with those who don't love Jesus, don't you? Praise in the name of the God, because He is such a good God. That is my God in heaven. He is such a good God. Praise in the name of the Lord. Yes, as we said a while ago, that this Mordecai, he done his best to get Esther in the, the queen uh, in to be a candidate for the queen i can sometimes i don't go along with it i don't care about uh, these uh fashion shows miss america and so on like that i like to see women and girls modestly dressed as well as men i like to see that but i sometimes think about when they are parading up and down in atlantic city or somewhere else uh, that the god can give them uh well, he could give the Esther a chance at uh, becoming queen. And uh, so <clears throat> I thought that there was a lot of them, according to one of the historians of the Jewish history, that he said that, oh, there was an awful lot of them that was in front of uh, the king, and he chose Esther out of the whole group. Uh, I just wonder why he chose Esther uh, out of the whole group, if it could have been for a reason, that there was a reason that he chose Esther at that time. I believe that there was a, a reason, because God maybe saw fit to make Esther queen just to save her people. Oh, yes, just to save her people at that time. He made her queen. And I've seen God uh, move in mysterious ways. Uh, how he saved Moses uh, and of uh, all the boy babies uh, that were being slain, uh, uh, that belonged to the Jews, the Jewish boys, uh, being slain uh, to, uh, under two years, uh, yes, under two months old. Uh, and uh, how Moses was saved out of the group. Uh, and I can see that God had his way. Oh, praise God. And when there was going to be a great famine come upon the country, upon the Jews, uh, that God saw fit some way to send Joseph ahead of them, that he could make uh, arrangements uh, and make preparation that the Jews would not be lost 
in that seven-year famine that was a coming, even though it took Joseph a long time to get situated to where God wanted him. Uh, hallelujah. God works in wonderful ways. He works in mysterious ways. Uh, and now they've brought Esther here at, uh, to the queenship, and I just wonder if God put her there for just that reason, that she would be in a place where she could save her people. Hallelujah, yes. She could save her people, uh, and uh, she did a good job uh, because Mordecai told her, said, you're going to have to. You're a Jew too, uh, and he'll exterminate uh, you as well as the rest of them when Haman comes along, and he will exterminate you, Esther, just with the rest uh, if you don't... Uh, well, if you don't do something about it, help us to pray that God can change his mind. Oh, yeah. And so you know, Esther, she said she would do it. She finally said she would because Mordecai told her that if you don't, God is not going to let the Jews, ever Jew, be exterminated because he had made a promise to Abraham that the seed was going to come forth there. There would have been some Jew left somewhere uh, if they'd have thought that they was going to exterminate them all. You know that old uh, Haman, that Agathite, who should have been slain because God said that he wanted all of that group of, of Agag to be killed. He wanted every one of them to be exterminated. But here's one evidently that got away. And whenever we let some sin go unscathed and we don't exterminate it in our life, it will grow and maybe turn around and cost us our life. Had you Stop to think of that. Don't let that sin grow too far into your life, into your heart, because it may take a hold of you. It may be just a uh, feeble spirit today, but before it's over with, it'll become a little devil. Oh, and bind you. Don't let it happen, but get rid of all of them. Like uh, they should have gotten rid of, uh, well, a gag and all of them. Uh, praise God. The Amalekites or Amalekites, whatever you call them, had given the Jews a lot of trouble, and God was trying to get rid of them. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, so Esther and Mordecai both, Esther had her maiden and those that attended on her to fast with her for three days, and Mordecai had a group fasting with him for three days. Uh, I don't guess that they had family altars around throughout the whole 127 provinces of uh, the Medo-Persians. Uh, I don't guess Ahasuerus uh, uh, ever stopped to think that for, even though he was favorable to the Jewish God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. I like to see m uh, leaders of the countries today that are favorable to the God of the Jews and of the Christians. Uh, can you say amen that they can be favorable there? Hallelujah. So she said that she would fast, uh, and she did. And she says now, she said, I'll go into the king, and if I die, I die. She had the same spirit that the three Hebrew children had when they talked uh, to the old Babylonian king. Um, yes, old Nebuchadnezzar, you remember that? That uh, the Jeremiah talked so much about to Zedekiah, old Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. Well, anyway... They had taken, this was in the days later on after Nebuchadnezzar, that they fasted their three days. Uh, and then she went in to the king of the, uh, well, Medo-Persian, and she went in to Ahasuerus, uh, her Artaxerxes, whatever you want to call him, uh, and she went in on her own, says, I I will go if I die, I die. And that's what those three Hebrew children was a telling Nebuchadnezzar, if I die, I die. And that's what they said, but we will not serve you. And she went in, and he, the, I guess it was the will of the Lord that he held out the scepter to her. Praise God that he has wonderful ways of saving his people, uh, and he has done us good also. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that he saved my soul and the souls of many others that listened to the gospel crusade. Uh, praise the Lord. And so he, she went in, and King Esther went in, and he held out the golden scepter to her. He had accepted her presence. He'd accepted her visit without his invitation, 
and she had a chance to talk to him, to tell him what all was going to happen, and the the seal that he'd signed. Uh, they had a they had a law there that when the Medo Persians, uh, when they signed the uh, well, when they signed the, their signet, uh, their ring to some document, it couldn't be changed. Uh, you've read that about Daniel when he was cast into the lion's den, that it couldn't be changed. Uh, that Darius there, the last Darius, uh, it couldn't be changed. And that's what this was all about here. It couldn't be changed. Uh, and that sin in my life, uh, it couldn't be changed. But thank God. God, he gave me a way to get rid of it. Uh, hallelujah. He gave me a way to shake that sin off. Uh, and I'm glad that he gave you that way too, uh, that you can praise God as you go to bed at night and say, thank you, God, for another day is a victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, another day with a victory in Jesus. Jesus is still good today as he was yesterday and as he will be tomorrow. Oh, he give her the scepter. And you know what? I would have been just as helpless as Queen Esther, but God has given us the blood. He's given us the blood of Jesus that we can be covered, now that we can approach the throne of grace with boldness in our hearts, that we can look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, Praise God, I'm thankful that we don't have to take chances on getting the sepulcher, uh, the scepter, I mean. We, uh, pardon me, there's a lot of difference in the two words. That we don't have to get this, uh, worry about getting the scepter, but we have the blood of Jesus, uh, which is more powerful yet because it's by a king that never changes his ways, nor his heart, nor his spirit. Glory be to God. I'm thankful that Jesus has brought us away. Aren't you glad? Yes, I know you are. Thank you, God. You know, now the Jews were given a way of escape. They were given that way. And I wonder how about us? Oh, are we given a way of escape? Hebrews in the second chapter and the third verse says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? My, that we can be out on the street corner. We don't have to, to, to hand out tracts. It's one way. I said we didn't have to unless God give you that. If God give you that, you have to hand them out. If God give you that calling, that is your calling. But just because that you don't hand out tracts is no sign that you're not witnessing for God because that you can show them that there is a way of escape. That when you drive to church every Sunday morning or Sunday night, I know up at Walkerville that we have troubles because the weather has been inclement on Sunday. And all the folks that go there are elderly folks. Uh, I realize that. But when you can go to church on Sunday morning and on Sunday night, there's people that are watching you. And you don't have to say a word I found that out this week. You don't have to say a word about your God, and the devil will be a-jumping on you because you have been witness for him. You can be a witness for him just by going to the house of God. Yes, by being in his congregation. It said to re be sure and assemble yourself as you can see the day approaching. For we can get together and we can discuss and share our experiences with the Lord together that we can testify what God has done for us and others will take up from there. Oh, yes. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Yes, I'm glad that you have accepted that way of escape. If there's one, brethren, sister, if there's one that you associate with, let them know that you love the Lord. Let them know what God has done for you. And you will be doing God a great service. Praise the Lord. Who? Yes, you'll be doing God a great service. You'll be getting a blessing yourself. And you may be doing a greater service to the one that you're talking to because you may cause him or her 
to change their mind. Oh, and that they can come in to the Lord Jesus Christ. That you have showed them that there is a way of escape. That you were lost and undone at one time without God or His Son. But today you've been found. Oh, you're not unwound anymore. But you've been found and covered with the blood of Jesus is the reason why that you have the strength to want to carry on for the Lord. And He'll bless you good. You may have your troubles. You may There may be times that it looks like that the end of the road is near. But thank God, when the end of the road is near, and when the end of the road is there, Jesus will be there too. He was there to welcome Stephen. Stephen fell asleep in Jesus, didn't he? And you can do the same. If you will remain true to the Lord Jesus Christ, remain true to him, and don't let him get out of your sight. Oh, I was just thinking, if you wanted to go into a tavern, you'd say no, because if I go in, my friend may leave while I'm in there, while I'm taking a couple snorts. Oh, praise God, he'll help you. Father in heaven, we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless. And we thank you, Lord, for making a way of our escape. Lord, that we can see souls continue to be saved and lives filled with your spirit. In the sweet and lovable name of Jesus and for his glory, amen and amen. And until this time next Sabbath afternoon, this is Evangelist Garland Williams returning you to your announcer.